Hey everybody, it's your girl Angie. Welcome back to Kiss My Cheeks TV. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers that is watching this review. We're about to get into the Encore, episode two. I know I'm late. <laughs> I know I am so late. I was in Atlanta. I was supposed, one of my, I ain't got to tell the whole story. Y'all don't care about why I was in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta <laughs> and now I'm back. It's a long story, and we ain't about to get into it. <clears throat> but um, let's jump into the encore. I'm sorry for being late, many days late. I think, like, my recording room, like, I'm not even going to show up. One day I'm going to do a tour of my recording room because it's also, like, my makeup studio and some other things. But right now it's, like, the college send-off room where, like, I have boxes of stuff I got from Amazon preparing to send my son off to college in August. It's not next month yet, but in August, you know, he'll be a freshman. So it's like, I have so much on my plate. It's a busy summer, but I'm like, once I become an empty nester, I plan on utilizing StreamYard more and doing some lives right after the episode, you know, having fun with everybody. But that'll come up in August because a lot of good shows getting ready to come back in July. But let's get into the encore. I didn't take no notes. <laughs> I didn't take any notes. I watched it. It was good. Carlos, this is a hit show. I'm so happy. Like, let's get into it. I forgot how I opened, and I don't care. The main part I saw when it first opened, I'm thinking Carlos was reading my mind last week because we, we getting a vote. The Cedar girl come on the TV talking about it's going to be a queen every week, and we're going to vote, and everybody get a vote. The queen gets to help make decisions for the group. Um, if it's a tie, I don't know how it could be a tie. It's nine. Like, can we just kick Keely out already? <laughs> but it's nine girls. It should never be a tie. But if it's a tie, the queen gets to break the tie. And the queen gets to call court and have them talk about shit. You know, be messy. You know, so I'm happy we get to vote. But I'm like, Carlos, next season... Next season, vote bitches out. Not vote bitches for the queen every week. It's a great, I love, you know I love Survivor. I love any kind of show where bitches get to vote and be out. <clears throat> but let's start voting bitches out of the house. But I'm here for the twist. Let's get to the vote. At the end of the day, everybody is like, Pam, I feel like they felt like Pam is the oldest. She's the most calm. Like, she don't start no shit. She gonna pray for us. Let's Pam got the most votes the first week. Period. So let's move on. So I this is the problem with taking notes. But this is a good thing about not taking notes is I feel like I'm not talking about every little conversation. Like I'm only talking about the shit that was important to me, which is why it's called Kiss My Cheeks TV. I just want to talk about my hot points and we can get in the comments and talk about everything else. <clears throat> The next thing I remember, we in the studio, and we giving away our love. Giving away my love for you. Bitch, I could be in the group. I could hold that note. I wasn't flat. <laughs> I'm the same fucking age. I can't dance, though. My knee is bad. <laughs> my knee is bad. Um... Back to the point. We giving away all our love in the studio. I love a good reggae song. But where was the rest? Like, what was the verse? All we heard was the chorus. I'm giving away my love for you. That's all we heard. And everybody was singing the same note. Like, this is a group of nine. We ain't have no soprano. I'm giving away. That's the alto. Keely did come with the bass. <laughs> But her bass sounded a little bit flat. Where's the verse? It's clear that Shamari is the lead singer. Why didn't we hear any of the lead? And then here comes Aubrey. Give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. I'm like, what the fuck is Aubrey saying? What is she doing? And people, because you know I'm on Twitter. People all over Twitter. Aubrey is singing down. Aubrey is going. I'm like, what the fuck? It looks like her lips are ready to burst at any minute. Side note, Aubrey, your confessionals are a hot fucking mess. You were gorgeous. 
And I don't like to talk about people's looks, but it's uncomfortable to watch on TV. I feel like if you do one more thing to your face, your skin will be see-through. And I'll be able to see every vein and structure of every piece of collagen or whatever the fuck you got plumped into your face. Stop it, girl. Stop it. You aren't even 40 years old. Maybe you are 40. I don't know. I thought Aubrey was a little bit younger than me. But you're doing too much to your face. It, it looks painful. I, it, it looks like it hurts for you to talk. It looks like it hurts for you to smile. It looks like it hurts for you to blink. Whew, Aubrey just, oh, she can be out the group too. I'm telling the only people that need, it need to be a trio. Shamari, Nivea, and Fa not Fallon, but Felicia, the likable twin, barely. But let's get back to it. So we giving away all our love. Carlos, you wrong. You wrong. I like 702. Now, mind you, I feel like I'm a little bit older, so I really wasn't one of those. They wasn't the girl group of my generation, but I probably listened to them in the car. Like, because I was, my girl groups are SWV, Escape, In Vogue, um, TLC. Like, I think 702 was a little bit, but mine, they ain't got shit to do with nothing. Um... These girls can't sing. These girls can't dance. I feel like you put them on the show. Yes, they need the opportunity, you know, to get their names back out there. Because I would have never, I didn't even know they fucking name. It was 702. I didn't know any of their names until this show. Misha and Irish. Okay. And I haven't heard of them. I can't even, off the top of my head, I can't even tell you a 702 song. I would have to go to title and I probably would recognize it if I heard it. <sighs> but Carlos, I don't think it's right for you to pay these ladies to be the joke of the show. They can't sing, they can't dance. You got bitches who are the drama queens. You pay them to be the queens of the show. Not, not... Not in a derogatory way, but like the drama queens of the show. The shit starters. The talking shits. Who else they gonna talk shit about but the two girls that can't sing or dance? Like, why are they here? And 30 days isn't enough. I feel like maybe if it was 90 days, and I don't know what Aaliyah can do, but Lorianne would whip their asses in shape. They would too much. Too much neck. I love making it. Get back on the focus of the show. I just don't like that they're here. They seem like the kindest, sweetest young ladies, but they cannot sing. They cannot dance. <clears throat> I don't <laughs> vote their asses out the house. <clears throat> but instead, we're going to let them stay here and let the bitches of the show, Keely, the twins. I know that one twin don't want to be in it, but you in it because you be talking shit to Aubrey. You know what I'm going to call this episode? This this shit then turned into Game of Thrones. Y'all know the many faces, gods. Arya is Arya in the house. Y'all know Arya from Game of Thrones, Arya Starks, and how she was a part of the the many faces god. She worshipped the many, god of many faces, where they could take their face off and put on. <laughs> That's what this shit reminds me of because these are the most two, three, four, five faces bitches I've ever seen. This episode took me on a roller coaster. So they done gave away they love. And they in the studio, you know, just talking shit. Keely, I, I, Keely sounded a mess. I want to make it make it clear. Keely sounds a mess <laughs> in her bass, her baritone. But at least she gave us a harmony. At least she get tried to harmonize. I'm giving away all in my love. <laughs> I got to pay attention. If I don't, that's probably why I take notes. So I could pay my ass attention and stay... Focus on the review. Stop giggling. <clears throat> so, Aubrey's sitting on the floor, leaning up against Pam and caressing her knee. It seems like Aubrey, because I've watched her a lot on many reality shows, she's very free-floating, touchy-feely. I'm sure she ain't mean shit by it. <clears throat> I'm very sure she ain't mean shit by it. She's just leaning and touching. She just seems like a very comfortable person. I'm not, I'm not, I don't like strangers. Right? I'm not going to be the one leaning and touching. But anyway, Pam 
has to make an announcement. Look, don't lean up and rub up on me. Because, you know, I'm from the church. And two men and two women don't lay together. That's what the Bible say. And I don't want no confusion. And Aria's like, I ain't trying to fuck you. I'm just leaning. And, and I didn't even know I was rubbing on your knee. I'm just chilling. And she's like, look. And people... The optics. I don't want no optics over here. Like I did used to be with some women in the back in the day, and we kind of knew that. But I wasn't gonna say nothing because I, I don't care. Love you, love people who you want to be with. Um, <clears throat> but I was with some women back in the day, and I don't want no confusion. God has delivered me, and that took me to that one. That one boy. They had a million memes about him talking about he was delivered, and then the next month he was called fucking around with some old men <laughs> look be who you want to be god loves everybody he made you that way it's nothing wrong with it but anyway so pam is like i gotta get up out of here because i can't be out don't nobody touch me don't hug me don't fist bump me just give me my personal space <laughs> now on twitter they was like pam had to hurry up and get up away from Aubrey because she probably was getting a little bit moist <laughs> with that knee rub. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I respect everyone's religion and I respect everyone's sexuality. But Keely and Aubrey and them offended. <clears throat> like, bitch, that's homophobic. You talking about um, you done prayed the gay away. <clears throat> so we gonna get back to that at the house meeting. Pam goes upstairs and she had to tell Shamari and Nivia the same thing. Like, don't touch me. I used to be with women and I don't want no optics, so just don't touch me. We gonna elbow bump. Elbow bumping is all we can do. That's all we can do in the house. Shamari and Nivia are cool. Whatever your boundaries are, that's our boundaries. And I would, I would have took it the same way. Like, I don't agree with what Pam said, but... I'm going to let you live. I, I'm always one of those that I'm going to let you live. As long as it's not affecting me or my family, I'm going to let you live. Live how you want to live, boo. Elbow bumps. That's it. So, did we have to have a house meeting? I can't We done had two house meetings. Let's just jump into the house meetings. The first house meeting, I don't know if it's the first or the second, but we got to confront Pam. We got to, because Pam, I don't know who called it, but we got to confront Pam. You homophobic, <laughs> bitch, I was bi, this Keely, bitch, I was bisexual, and it's offensive for you to say you could pray the gay away. You can't pray no gay away and all of this, and so they had to get on Pam and Keely and all that. They had their argument, and let me tell you this. I understand where Keely's coming from <clears throat> because... Even though I come from the the book of let people live, respect Pam's boundaries, there are some people who aren't accepting of LGBT and they do feel like, especially parents, I feel like I'm going to take them to church and dunk them and do everything. We're going to pray to get away and do all this stuff. And it's damaging to the child that is LGBT. And I feel like by Pam saying she prayed her gay away, or she didn't say that was Keely said, but she just said she was delivered. I feel like she opens the door for other people to use that to beat their kids over the hill. Pam is delivered. You get delivered too. Hear this Bible and beat you. Like, I'm very, very Christian. I love the Lord, but I'm very accepting and I don't judge people. And I love love. So I want everyone to love love. Love who you want to love. And I don't like when people use religion to try to beat the gay out of people. Like it's, I just, I understand where Keely was coming from there. Like don't get on national TV saying this because you open a door for other people. So you know, and it's damaging. But... Just let Pam live. Let her live. We know 
it's an eternal thing with Pam. And it's nothing, Keely, or you calling her homophobic and all this. It's not going to change her. She's fighting through something, and it has to be her fight. She has, and that's why, that's why I love my church in Atlanta. I miss Atlanta so much, y'all, but we ain't going back to Atlanta. Because it was so accepting and so inviting. You did not have to hide who you were. Everyone came in and worshiped together. No judgment. Nobody was in there trying to pray your gay away. If you were married to a man, you and your husband came to the church and sat together and worshiped with everyone. If you were married to a woman, you and your partner came to the church and worshiped together. No judgment. Nobody bothered you. Matter of fact, we included you. <clears throat> it was all inclusive. And I love that church so much. And it wasn't like they advertised it like, <clears throat> you know, LGBT is this is an LGBT church. It just was that type of church where people loved people. And they didn't care what you were going through. They didn't care what your sexuality was. They didn't care what kind of sins you were doing in the world because everybody got a, got sin. Everybody. <clears throat> they just welcomed you in <clears throat> and we worshiped God and that was it. That was it. And I feel like Pam maybe just needs to be introduced to that kind of church where she can feel welcome being herself. But like I said, that's something internal with her and Keely and everybody else, whatever y'all say to her, you're not going to work out that internal thing that she's going through. So I just say let people live. But let's move on past Pam. The next thing we have is Fallon and Keely talking shit about Misha. Saying Misha can't dance. Why the fuck she here? And all this and all that. This is Carlos why I say you just brought these girls here to be beat up on. Because what else are we going to talk about? I mean... <laughs> What else we going to talk about with these ladies when they're not girl group ready? They're not girl group ready. So <clears throat> we got to have another house meeting because Misha overhears the conversation. And she goes upstairs and she's crying to Nivea and Shamari. And Pam is like, no, ma'am, not under the queen's watch. We ain't going to have no bullying. So she calls a house meeting. They have a house meeting. When I tell you the fake shit, oh, the fake shit. <laughs> so now, Keely, you know, they, she was like, I heard the twins because they wanted to have, and she was, Iris was like, cut the fake shit. Y'all was talking shit about us. What's up? Say it to my face. And so, Felicia is now in her feelings. I'm like, I ain't say shit about you. I don't like that everybody fouling me talking shit and everybody say that I'm the one talking shit. And I'm like, oh. Felicia, you do be talking shit, but we're going to let you live this time because it wasn't you this time, but it probably was you the other time. You just didn't get caught on camera. But anyway, here comes Fallon. Well, I probably said it. Bitch, you know you said it. <laughs> I respect a bitch who can stand up and say, I said it. I said, bitch, I said you can't sing, you can't dance. Now, she did say, I just don't want you to look bad. I respect Fallon, <clears throat> but it's a way that you should have said it. Like, girl, because see, we forgot that. <laughs> I forgot to mention, but y'all watch the show. Y'all know they got to come up with an album of 10 songs in 30 days. And three of the 10 songs, all nine people got to be on it. All nine got to be featured on it. I'm giving a word. <laughs> that low part be killing me. Um, Get, get back on the focus. Um, So... They going back and forth. And finally, here come Keely. Fallon, I do feel like you trying to discourage people and make people feel disrespected. And I've heard, and I'm like, bitch, this is where the many faces come from. I'm like, Keely, where this face come from? Because you were having the conversation <laughs> with Fallon. Matter of fact, thank God for the flashbacks. You started all the shit. You started the shit with Aubrey saying Aubrey was being divisive. You had to come have a conversation with Fallon about 702 girls. I'm like, bitch, where you come from? Like, I don't like the way you um trying to bring them down. I'm like, where that face come from? But oh no, Keely got some more faces. 
So then Felicia came in and said, bitch, see, I got your number. You, you the shit starter of the group. You hear the backstab, talk about people behind their back, and then pretend like we the one saying it when you the one saying it. Nah, bitch, y'all saying it too. But y'all standing in your shit. She just ain't standing in her shit. And so they call her a bitch. And I was here for everything. I was here for all of it. And I believe that was the end of the house meeting. So next, Aubrey is upstairs. She want to show the twins her creative direction. Talking about, well, Keely could have did it, but she didn't, so I did it. And then they have another house meeting where Aubrey show off all the creative direction. And I'm looking at these pictures, and I'm like, bitch, what did you do? This looked like some shit Tyra did, where everybody laying down with their face stacked on top of each other. Like, bitch. And then it's just all white. So that's your creative? <laughs> that's your creative. Aubrey the one who wants to pussy pop twerk and get down with the group over here now you wanted the creative directing i just want to do something where everybody can be one group well bitch you was the one who wanted two groups like two faces two faces like these bitches are here to make reality tv and it's good it's good that i don't know about how many songs they gonna be giving away but they making some real good reality tv but i'm like aubrey this creative is trash Nobody wants to be in all white with their heads laid together. <laughs> no. No, I let me be the creative. I could whip y'all one. Everyone is not in all white shape. Aubrey, number one. Aubrey, number one. And I could speak on it because I don't really like to wear all white neither. It's not slimming. The only one, the only one, two. Shamari and Pam, everybody else needs all black. We need something slimming, sexy, all black, heels. Since y'all like colorful wigs, everybody get a different color wig. Be the rainbow group. Shit, I don't know. I just don't see it. Then we beat up on Keely some more. And then now, after Felicia just called her a two-faced backstabbing bitch the day before, Felicia jumps in because everybody beating up on keely again we aren't gonna beat up on keely we aren't i'm like this the bitch we want to get out the house because keely said keely said because everybody now want to know well bitch why are you in a group why are you laying out vocals you don't want to be in a group you're not creative directing why are you here go to fuck home just go to fuck home keely was like aubrey can creative direct all she wants to i'm still getting my check and i'm still gonna be sitting in this house for 30 days getting my check I ain't mad at you, Keely. Make TV. That's that's why Keely is there to make sure that you all are making a reality show. She don't want to sing with y'all asses all flat. Now Keely can dance. She can go and get in and kind of help y'all with the dance moves. You can dance, girl. But she's here to make a check and to make sure y'all have a show to watch because she know y'all ain't about to get no ten songs. And what's the um, consequence if they don't? Because I don't see it happening either. I don't see them having one good song. But we shall see. I I really like this show, Carlos. <clears throat> Keely in the kitchen crying. I, I just don't know what to do. Because now she got another face. This is her victim face. I don't know what to do. Because you all were just calling me a bitch the other day. And now you have my back. And you're telling everyone not to call me a bitch. And I just don't know how to feel. I'm like, maybe if you put the wine glass down, you can get control of your emotions and know how to feel. Maybe if you didn't walk around in your pajamas all day and open up a magazine or a laptop, you can get a creative inspiration together like how about you do that keely <laughs> the house of many faces aubrey got a whole bunch of faces and it's hard <laughs> don't say that shady <laughs> leave aubrey her face alone <clears throat> keely definitely got a whole bunch of faces these twins just <sighs> the best person in this house is nivia we can vote Keely out and we still gonna have good TV because Nivea, she just makes the shit funny. I will be like, Nivea is me, but I'm not that animated. Am I that animated? I don't think I'm that animated. But, but Nivea is how I would be on the inside, just watching, giggling. 
I'd probably be talking shit too. See, I'm too vocal. I probably would be a little bit of Felicia and I, I probably wouldn't be in the back giggling. I'd be in the back talking shit too because <laughs> I don't know how to be quiet. But Nivea has me cracking up. I'm telling you, you could just have be a trio. Felicia, Nivea, Shamari. Them the only ones that can sing. Y'all can help Nivea with her dancing. And we need to be voting bitches out, Carlos. Next week, we got to vote for a new queen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Next season, we're going to do this shit again. This is a little bit of test season. You know, a little bit of during the pandemic. We can't do too much. We got to be in one house. Next season, we're going to get new bitches. And it could be some of the same bitches. I don't care. But no double groups. One person from a group. And then we're going to get to voting bitches out. That's my refrigerator, y'all. The ice maker is fucked up. It's on its last leg. Maybe a payday or two, we're going to have to eventually get a new refrigerator. We're going to see how long we can hang on to it. Because, you know, refrigerator ain't cheap. But anyway, like, comment, share. I can't wait to see what you all have to say about this week's episode in the comments. And I will be back. Is it Wednesday? I think this is a free week where I don't have a busy schedule where the review could possibly be on time. And I'm getting my hair done, so I probably will. I'm so vain. I'm sorry. I'll get my hair done, so I feel like getting on camera because I'll feel cute. <laughs> anyway, I'll see y'all later. Bye.